Heria Hau no Te Raroa, uh, Whakatohia, Samoa, Fiji, Me Tonga. Um, I am currently the Content and Communication Specialist at the Rugby World Cup. I call that my muggle job. And then by heart and by purpose job, I am someone who cares about gender equity and uh, making sure that we have equitable pathways and outcomes for our youth and especially for our Indigenous wahine. So this conversation uh, for me, as I said at the beginning, I'm not an expert, I'm just the MC, um, but I very much am excited to learn about what's going on and what's been happening with uh, Education Outdoors New Zealand. So welcome everyone to the launch of our new resource, and I say our because I've just made myself a part of um, the EONZ team. Uh, welcome to the launch of our new resource, Going With The Flow, Menstruation, I can't even say that word, and I've practiced it so many times, Menstruation and rainbow inclusive practices in the outdoors. This resource is a multimedia resource about gender equity in the outdoors. It aims to inspire positive changes to outdoor practice and culture. So just to kind of set the scene, um, we want to talk about why we're here. Why have you chosen to tune in? And I'd love to see even in the chat if you wanted to tell us specifically why you've chosen to tune in. But the general, uh, the general hope for us is highlight, promote, demonstrate, and recognize. We're here to highlight the issue of gender inequity in outdoor practice and culture. We're here to promote the resource with uh, relevant stakeholders like yourselves. We're here to demonstrate how the resource can be used to create safe and inclusive environments for all outdoor participants, both in sport and active rec. Um, and we're here to publicly recognize the people who have contributed to the development of the resource. And all I wrote in capitals, most importantly, we're here to celebrate the work that has been put in towards making sure that this resource can go live. Um, so how are we gonna do that? What is gonna be important to this type of corridor? Uh, we want to be open and honest, uh, open to our honest conversations, both with ourselves and with others. There's going to be some topics and things that are discussed and shared on this particular launch by experts in their own lives. Um, and I really hope that we can engage all of that in, uh, that information and that kōrero with, with love and with respect. Um, and that, that kind of leads to my next point around understanding that our life stories have beautiful and important differences. So the easiest and most effective way we can contribute to this launch tonight if anything else is just by actively listening and figuring out ways in which we can use our influence and our own platforms to make this launch um, reach the the communities and the people that it needs to reach uh, and finally we just got to celebrate it's time to have a party um, we want to celebrate what a milestone this is both for education outdoors new zealand but for many of the people educators youth uh, that are going to be positively impacted by this particular resource uh, speaking of impact i think for me personally, I was really excited when I got the message about uh, helping out and emceeing this kaupapa. I was honest from the start. I said, I don't know that I'm the right person for this because I haven't learned uh, enough or spent enough time learning about resources as such. But I was I was warmly welcomed by um, Education Outdoors New Zealand and the Sport NZ team who essentially said, well, that's the whole point. It's, it's time to come and learn. It's time to come and uh, figure out how you can use your position and your influence uh, to allow this resource to, to reach even further than it naturally would. So I'm here just as much a learner as um, everyone else. And uh, in all honesty, when I talk about education outside the classroom, I was that kid at school, man. I wanted to go on every trip. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. But what I then started to realize in reflection, like being 26 now and looking back at my primary school and teenage years, I realized that there's just this weird relationship between growing up and becoming a young woman and the things that, uh, the barriers that kind of stood between being a young woman and participating in sport and active rec and also in uh, education outside the classroom. So I'm even more interested and what this resource is going to offer not only me as a young woman but many of our young people in the different uh, lives that, that they're living and that different experiences that they're going through. So um, 
nevertheless, just a couple of housekeeping and resource uh, notes for us tonight. First thing is everyone's going to be muted. So right now, if someone walked into this room right now, they'd think I'm crazy because I've been talking for seven minutes flat. But what that's what it's going to be about tonight is that uh, everyone will be muted. And there is a little function on Zoom. I've just been uh, told that instead of switching um, instead of us on our end switching the view for Zoom, you actually have the ability to DIY yourself and the way in which you view this session. So right now it might be a huge screen where you can see a slide and then there'll be participants or us panelists on the left. It might just be my face. I'm not too sure particularly what it looks like right now, but there will be a little box that says view on your Zoom. And if you play around with that view button, you'll be able to change uh, the different ways in which the launch can look like for you today. So everyone's going to have their own DIY experience visually through this. But if for any reason you are stuck, uh, let us know in the chat and we'll hopefully be able to help sort you out. But I'm hoping by now, two years into uh, COVID, that we've all become Zoom, our own Zoom IT um, masters. But as I said, if you get a bit stuck, just let us know. Um, if you have a question, including during the panel, which we will hold later this evening, put it in the chat function, which we've just proven we're really capable of doing. Uh, either it can be a general question, it can be about um, what I had for lunch today, or it could be some really important questions that you want to ask our panelists specifically. So do let us know via the chat if you have any questions. And just a courtesy notice, you would have seen it entering into this chat tonight that uh, this launch is going to be recorded. So um, it's just more... Uh, uh, we know that there's no screens uh, on for tonight, but it's just more if you're going to be asking questions, just to let you know uh, that, yeah, we are recording this launch tonight. So what are you in for this evening? You're in for a panel, you're in for a sneak peek of the resource, but we are going to begin with the story. Everything starts with a good story. So before we start that, if for any reason you choose to post up on maybe a social media channel that you have, um, or you just want to let a cool, like let a mate know that there's this cool launch going on, then please feel free to look for updates on uh, the Education Outdoors New Zealand Facebook page. Or if you're gonna post up on any stories, then please use the hashtags going with the flow and going with the flow and hashtags outdoor periods. So go for gold. I'm just the MC from now on. I hope you won't have to hear too much from me because we've got an amazing lineup. So to start us off um, and you can hype, it, hype them up in the chat if you want, we're gonna start with our co-chair of Education Outdoor New Zealand, professional development facilitator and project leader of Going With The Flow, Sophie Watson. Sophie, come on in. Kia ora, Arizona, thank you so much for that wonderful welcome. Um, kia ora Koto, I just cannot believe that we're here tonight. It's been quite a few years in the making, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're really excited to be at this point to be sharing the resource with you, so I really hope you enjoy tonight. And please do ask questions along the way, and we'll get to those at the end. So, um, I'm Sophie Watson and I am one of the co-chairs of Education Outdoors New Zealand and I've also had the privilege for the last couple of years to lead this resource um, and also to be the main writer of it. So um, I'm really excited about sharing with you the background of it and also um, how we've gone about creating it. So as this next quote will show you, um, I think it really kind of captures what this whole resource is about, which is making sure that menstruation isn't something that people should be sorry about or ashamed about. And in terms of an outdoor context, we want all people to have really meaningful and um, exciting experiences in the outdoors where they feel included. So this resource really is about changing that um, to make sure that it is inclusive. So despite recent changes to period culture, there is still quite a bit of negative stigma around it. And so this negative stigma means that people who menstruate, their specific needs aren't always considered or provided for in outdoor experiences. So some of these quotes come from young women that we've spoke to um, through the resource, and um, we'll, we'll get to a bit of that later um, about their specific stories, but really we're wanting to change outdoor culture and practice so that it's inclusive for all people. Um, and that's not just um, young women who menstruate, that's everyone who menstruates. So we use the term people who menstruate. Traditional gender stereotypes um, also influence outdoor, um, how we view the outdoors and how we view people who menstruate. And so the barriers that people face aren't just the practicalities of how to manage their period, it's also about how they're viewed by others, 
So the resource is also designed to challenge how you think about people who menstruate and how you think about um, what is considered normal um, in terms of who recreates outdoors and how they recreate. There's a lot of misinformation and missing information about periods and how to manage your period in the outdoors. Um, and so this resource helps to build on the existing knowledge and specify it for an outdoor context um, so that we can make an outdoor culture and practice that is inclusive of everyone. So there's been really fantastic progress in the last couple of years um, around reducing period poverty, and that's particularly come from the Labor government and also from organisations like the Period Place, who are doing outstanding work in this area. Um, they've brought in the free period products in schools, which is a really important initiative. Um, and there've been some fantastic changes um, to increase gender equity in sport and education by organisations like Inside Out, um, Word, um, Shift, New Zealand, um, Sport New Zealand. So there's been a really positive momentum in that space and people are wanting to learn more about uh, gender equity and how to support people with periods. So we're really um, aiming to support and boost that movement. So I've been an outdoor educator um, for quite a few years. And even though I thought that I was always being really um, inclusive in my practices and as a person who menstruated you know was really conscious of the things that my students would be going through I actually unwittingly at times uh, excluded some of my students who didn't quite cater to their needs so I understand what it's like to go through this learning journey and um, really we just want to make sure that people feel supported educators adults anyone who supports young people in the outdoors and adults in fact um, to yeah, to make positive changes so that everyone is included. Kind of like what this quote suggests, you know, young people are calling for us to make change. They want to normalize periods. Um, and so we have the power to do that. So I had the privilege of talking with some young women as part of my master's research. And um, uh, they spoke to me about their experiences in high school outdoor education programs. And one of the findings that came from the research was that some young women, um, their period was a huge barrier to them in their outdoor participation. Specifically, they wanted their schools and their teachers to educate them about their period and how to manage it when they're in the outdoors. Not just in terms of like the practicalities, like how do you change your period products when you're out there in the outdoors? How do you find privacy when you're in an alpine environment? How do you talk to your peers when you have your period and you might be moving more slowly or have pain? But they also wanted their teachers and their outdoor instructors to think about how they might provide for um, them, them when they're on their period. So thinking about things like facilities, um, what other resources might be needed, how could those teachers better prepare those students beforehand? So the resource has evolved since that point, since I guess the birthplace of the resource. Um, and it's been a really collaborative process. So um, we've involved all kinds of different people in this. Um, it certainly hasn't been a solo effort. We've spoken to experts in their field. We've had a huge number of people contribute their experiences about how they manage their period in the outdoors. And we've had pre-service teachers contribute to the lesson plan development. And we've spoken to larger organizations involved in health, um, the outdoors and education. So um, the resource hopefully reflects a really diverse range of views and experiences and is current and relevant for a lot of different people. It was also really important to us in the development of the resource that young, it was accessible for young people. We don't want adults to be the gatekeepers of this knowledge. We want young people to have the power in changing their own experiences. So we've designed the resource in a way that makes it completely accessible for young people to view on their own. We also, to create change to outdoor culture, it can't just rely on people who menstruate. We need non-menstruators to be involved in that process as well. So um, hi to my everyone. Um, this resource caters to you as well. Um, and, you know, it can be really difficult to talk about some of these topics. So we've been aware of that and we haven't just chucked you in the deep end. Um, we've gone through a, a bit of a process to help you identify how to talk to other people about these topics, how to have safe, open conversations, how to reflect on your own understandings and perceptions of these things before maybe teaching other people about it. Um, so it's a really good stepping stone and um, hopefully you'll enjoy the journey just as much as I have. So um, this resource wouldn't be possible without our amazing uh, funding partners. 
So I'd like to acknowledge the Ministry of Education, Sport New Zealand, the University of Canterbury, Leave No Trace Aotearoa, and the Post-Primary Teachers Association for their generous contributions to the resource. They have helped us to create a high quality, accessible and inclusive resource. And without their support, it just wouldn't have been um, the outcome that it has been. So I really, well, we EONS really want to show our, um, our gratitude to them for their contributions and support. I also really want to acknowledge these specific people for their significant contributions to the content of the resource. So these people are experts in their own field and um, they've offered a lot of advice and guidance along the way, helping to shape the resource. And um, I really appreciate the time and effort that they've given to us throughout this process. Um, and again, the resource reflects their diverse knowledge and experience. There were also a wide range of people that um, shared their experiences and that, that can be a really challenging thing to do. So I want to mihi to them um, to say thank you for their um, openness and courage and sharing their experiences. Um, the resource really reflects their experiences and wouldn't be the same without their input. So um, that gives you a little bit of a background as to why we're here and um, what has been put into the development of the resource. And, um, Hopefully by the end of this uh, release, you'll um, really enjoy engaging and getting your teeth stuck into the nitty gritties of the resource. So thank you so much again. And Arizona, I'll hand back to you. Wonderful. If we were if we were live, I'd be cheering for you so much. I'd be <laughs> doing all the claps and stuff, but I feel if I clapped in this house, I might someone might come and check on me and see if I'm okay. So <laughs> I, I thank you so much, Sophie, for starting us off with that story. I I was typing away madly. I think one of the things I really enjoyed, and it's sim it's a simple change in lingo, but it's so effective is, is the usage of the words people who menstruate. I think people really underestimate how much, how much more inclusive we can be just by understanding the power of our words. And uh, you, you've, you kind of just, let, I just wrote so many notes. Here's another one I wrote. I'm, I'm just going to read them out straight how I wrote them. Don't let adults be the gatekeepers of this knowledge. <laughs> And then I wrote in capitals, I love that, because I think that's so true. And as someone who has dedicated a lot of her time and advocacy to our youth and to our young people, we know that they are the power, they hold the power to their own change as well. So I really appreciate that this resource has um, been created in collaboration and that it shows us the roles that we can all play. Um, and I feel that our panel is going to be able to help bring to life uh, the answers or maybe some thought provoking um, prompts around how we can all play our part as well. So tonight our panel is called Show the Impact. And after doing my research, this panel are definitely not only showing the impact, but they're out here making impacts themselves. Uh, we're going to welcome to the digital space our facilitator who is then going to facilitate the intros of our panel um, themselves. So if I could please welcome our Education Outdoors New Zealand Kaira who provides education outside the classroom, teaching and learning support to schools and teachers, Sophie Hoskins. Come on in. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora koutou, everybody. How's it going? Uh, just like you all, I'm super excited to be here tonight um, to be here for the launch of this amazing resource. And um, yeah, already learning so much and have learned so much. Um, I'm an outdoor education secondary teacher as well as the um, outdoor education kaiārahi and I'm going to introduce our, uh, our panel team um, so if they want to come on board and um, you'll see their beautiful faces. Here, I'll pop in on there so we'll um, I'll start by introducing uh, Sophia Tuala. Uh, Sophia is giving us our uh, youth development perspective and um, is the founder and facilitator of Warrior Princess Workshops. Kia ora, Sophia. We also have with us uh, Dr. Chris North um, from the Faculty of Health at Te Wananga or Waitaha, University of Canterbury, and also the founder of Leave No Trace New Zealand, Toitu Te Whenua. And he's giving us our educator perspective. Kia ora, Chris. We have Alex Carr giving us a rainbow perspective. Alex is from Inside Out and the Resource Developmental Lead. Kia ora, Alex. And Isla Day, not sure if you can see her face yet. 
Um, here, she, here she is, giving us our youth perspective. Um, Isla is from Word, an after-school mountain bike coaching program for kids and is the Young Woman and Girls Lead. So I'm going to ask you all uh, some questions and um, we'll start with uh, one question for everybody, which you could give me a, um, a short answer for, and then I'm going to direct some specific questions to you all. So um, don't forget to unmute. And just a reminder, if anyone's got questions, pop them in the chat. Um, they can be general or directed at someone specifically and they will be answered in that question and answer session at the end. So um, we will start with Isla and, and then move down for this very first question for you all is, um, what is one way you celebrate diversity in the outdoors in regards to diverse participants and diverse experiences people have? Awesome. Thanks so much for the welcome, Sophie. Yeah, um, so at Word, we put a bunch of effort into creating really empowering spaces for young people who identify as female. And we believe that if you can see it, you can be it. So we're really, really stoked that half our instructor team and more than half of our board identify as women. Awesome. Thank you, Isla. Um, Chris? Kia ora. So awesome Kia ora. to be here. Um, I agree so much with Isla. I think I work in teacher education and at the university I run courses introducing people to outdoor experiences. And I think if people can read about themselves and see images of themselves and what I'm doing, then they can see that they belong and they can bring their authentic selves to whatever we're doing. And I think that's awesome. Awesome, thank you, Chris. Um, Alex, what's one way you celebrate diversity in the outdoors in regards to diverse participants and diverse experiences people have? Yeah, totally. Kia ora tato. Um, yeah, so just following on from either and Chris, I think that representation is is really key and something I like to do. Um, I love, I'm a keen tramper so I and trail runner. So when I have um, my pack on or just something, I, I have a, um, a, a rainbow pride flag or a trans pride flag, um, just I, I find that it starts conversations and it's a really tiny thing, but it's um it just allows me to be myself and not not hide away from that. And I think that um, when people can make those personal connections, um, that can be a really powerful thing, even if it's just me who's who's doing it. I think it can spark can have those ripple effects. Well, thank you, Alex. And how about you, Sophia? What was your answer for that question? Well, kia ora koutou. Um, a lot of the work that we do comes from a te ao Māori perspective. So we encourage everyone to know that when we're going into the outdoors, you're going into the realms of the atua, which have feminine and masculine energy. So there's a, a space for everyone in the outdoors, whether it's Papatuanuku or Tane Mahuta's domain. So that, yeah, we'd like to promote that everyone has a space in nature. Kia ora. thank you, Sophia. Okay, so moving on to some specific questions, and I'm going to start this one with um, Alex and then Sophia. Um, what is the funniest myth you've heard about managing periods in the outdoors or about periods in general? Might get some giggles out of this one. The one that I, I came out was actually not, it's not that funny. I sort of interpreted funny as like strange or something that didn't make sense to me. So I hope that's okay. Yeah, no, that's um, great. Cool. Um, I, and I guess it's the one that probably, probably has impacted me and people around me um, the most is that the myth that um, that everyone who gets periods are women and that yeah, uh, all women get periods um, because that myth um, excludes a lot of people who um, firstly cisgender, so non-trans women who, who can't get periods for whatever reason, but also trans men um, and non-binary people who also menstruate. So I think that that stuck with me as being having the most impact on, on our communities, our rainbow communities. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. And Sophia? Um, if you go swimming in the ocean while you're bleeding you will die or you will get attacked by a shark and die awesome okay two two great answers there thank you very much and um now moving on to our next question this one is for isla and alex now we'll start with you first isla um what is one strategy you use to create safe group culture when discussing sensitive topics like menstruation and gender diversity yeah, uh, so at Word, we're really doing our best to, to talk about these sensitive topics, we say openly and often. 
And like at the start of our programs, uh, we state that all of our instructors are carrying period products. It can be as simple as that. Um, and we've received really positive feedback from that. And we ran a session at our instructor training last year uh, for instructors of all genders, brainstorming how we could be more supportive of our young people who menstruate. And it was really, really cool to see people feeling confident to ask questions in that space, especially from people who don't menstruate. And one of our instructors was there to like explain how to use a pad so everyone knew. Um, and it was really cool to have such, such an honest conversation with our whole team. And I think part of the fear of the unknown is what makes people nervous to speak about these topics. So yeah, like talking about these topics openly and often will hopefully take away that unknown and create some really inclusive spaces. Thank you, Isla. Um, and Alex. Yeah, so I guess um, from a gender diverse perspective, um, talking about menstruation and periods can can sometimes be quite a confronting or a distressing experience for people who really don't connect with that part of themselves. Um, and so I think one really important thing when um, having discussions, particularly with gender diverse and trans um, participants, is to enable, to, to, to allow a space at the start for them to self-determine their comfort levels and also how the language that they use. And also just for everyone to see who's in the room, just so that they can be aware of the language and the way that they talk about things. Um, and so I think, yeah, having having that like sort of around at the start where you can introduce yourself um, and that sort of stuff I think is really important. And also during the discussions, having um, like a safety word, like we, we um, often at Inside Out talk about like cold toast or, or hot toast. So if it's the conversation's going really well, you know, you can say hot <laughs> toast, but if cold toast just means that, you know, the conversation sort of just bring the conversation to an end if it's getting a little too much. Um, so those are some of the things that, um, yeah, I think could be really helpful um, when you are including trans and rainbow to participants. Awesome, thanks um, Isla and Alex, two great perspectives there. Um, my next question is for um, Chris and Sophia, um, and we'll start with you first, Chris. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received about how to manage periods or support people who manage periods in the outdoors? Awesome, yeah, so um, as somebody who doesn't menstruate, uh, the uh, I just to talk about the other conversations so far, which is bring it out, talk about it, everybody, whether people, they're people who are menstruating or not, uh, needs to be in the picture. And then I break up into smaller groups and uh, particularly as somebody who doesn't menstruate, I don't have any lived experience of it. And there's a lot of people who are there who can really support each other um, in, their, uh, in dealing with menstruation in the outdoors. So I, the best advice is go to the experts. Thank you, Chris. And Sophia. Um, I like the advice around um, being active or doing some kind of walking can help with physical discomfort and also raspberry leaf tea. So um, that's something that you can easily take with you. Like if you've got water that you can boil, that's accessible. And a tea bag is something small that you can put in your pack as well. And for me, that's been an amazing um, anti-inflammatory and really helps if I'm bleeding heavily. So that was some really good advice someone shared with me a long time ago that I thought could be very accessible in the outdoors as well. Kia ora. Thank you, Sophia. Again, uh, two great perspectives there. Um, and my last question um, is for Isla and Chris. And we'll go back to you, Isla. How do you plan to support, encourage, and uffy others to use this amazing resource? I'm so stoked about this resource. Like, totally wish that this was something that existed when I was in school. And I think it were, we're really keen to lead by example here um, and use that resource ourselves in the hope that we empower the young people we work with to use it as well. Um, we're really excited to be able to reinforce what these young people are hearing at school or at home um, and be able to create a space where they can have really positive conversations about these topics with, with adults alongside the ones that they're having with their teachers and their parents. Kia ora, thank you, Isla. And Chris? 
Jonah, yeah, I, I work in teacher education, which is a real privilege. So I get to work with uh, people who are training to be teachers. And that's something that I'm going to be leaning on really heavily. I'm so excited. I've watched this develop over the years. And uh, it's just going to be fantastic for supporting teachers, those who menstruate and those who don't, and um, making the outdoors more accessible to everyone. And I'm also... Um, in my work with Tuitu uh, Tefenua, Leave No Trace, uh, we develop resources for this and we've got a website. I'm going to put it out there and it's going to be part of our training. So I, I just think this needs to go big as. Kia ora. Kia ora. I would love to um, carry on this discussion and, and keep asking questions because I'm learning heaps and I wish I was able to um, note take right now. So I'm super glad it's recorded. But um, yeah, thank you so much. That is the end of our um, panel uh, discussion. Um, but some amazing insights there and some great tips. Um, so thank you very much for that, uh, you four. And I will pass it back over to Arizona. Kia ora. Yay, thank you so much to our panel, to Sophie for that facilitation. I'm sure the chat, honestly, the best thing ever is to check the chat after you've um, had a session because people are always out here loving up on the advice and uh, the the golden nuggets we're calling them tonight that people drop during panels. So a couple of things that I'm constantly reminded of and are very appreciative of is the importance of representation um, from all angles that was shared via the panel. I think always, if you can see it, you can be it. I love hearing that line. Um, and it's something that all of us, I think, can keep in mind both in, in empowering our own selves to be our best selves because we are something that people see every day, but also understanding our privilege and our platform and really recognizing in a room who isn't being seen, who isn't here and who needs to be here at the table of decision-making. So thank you so much uh, to our panel um, and for reminding us of the impact of equitable access to resource. Oh, if I could say, could I get an amen, then I would say, can I get an amen? I'm pausing. Why is my laptop pausing? Please don't pause on me. Not now. Um, so we want to know the resource. That's why we're here tonight. And the next part is about showcasing uh, our resource. So tuning in, we're tuning back in actually to the wonderful Sophie Watson. Sophie, come and make the big reveal. We've been waiting. <laughs> I know. I'm sure people are on the edge of their seats right now. Um, sorry to keep everyone waiting, um, but we thought it was really important to get that backstory first and to hear from our wonderful panelists. They did such an amazing job. So thank you so much to the four of you. So here we go, the resource. Well, um, the resource has three main parts. So there's a print resource, which is actually an e-based resource. Um, and this includes a wide range of information, and I'll go into the specifics of that in a minute. Included in the print resource is also um, five lesson plans that people can use um, with young people. And then we have a four part video series. So all of these parts combine together to make an awesomeness that can be used by anyone, um, anywhere. It is grounded in an Aotearoa New Zealand context, but uh, some of the information certainly will be applicable elsewhere around the world. Um, but we've got some details around um, traditional Māori practices of ikura, um, periods, um, and things like that, which are very specific to New Zealand, which is wonderful. The resource is going to be um, live for you to access tomorrow morning at 9am from our website. Um, so that is freely available for anyone to use. We would love for you to share it widely. Um, and so what's going to be available is the print resource, the lesson plans, and the first video. Um, the remaining videos will be rolled out in the coming weeks, so um, make sure that you stay tuned to our Facebook page because um, we'll announce those rolling out there. Right, so let's dive into the print resource. Um, this covers a wide range of information, so it's not just about informing you about different menstrual practices and perceptions, but it's also about helping to support um, educators and practitioners. So there's a section specific for that group of people, um, so that provides um, tips and tricks around how to actually create safe and inclusive environments, how to manage difficult conversations or conversations that might go off track and bring them back into focus, um, how to support young people in different pursuits and in different environments of when they have their period. There are practical tools and strategies about for everyone who menstruates and for non-menstruators to know about, you know, how do you actually change your period products what a period product is best to use in which kind of environment, how to manage pain, um, how to navigate traditional gender stereotypes so that we can kind of blow those out of the water and make sure everyone feels 
included and accepted. The um, lesson plans are in the second half of the print resource. And so there are five one hour lesson plans and they're suitable um, for young people aged 15, sorry, nine to 15, which is about um, year level six to 10. Um, and they have been um, designed so that they're progressive. Um, but they can be expanded or shrunk depending on the, the young people that you have in front of you or the time frame that you have to work with. And you don't need to be a teacher to deliver these. So we really invite everyone who works with young people in the outdoors to um, deliver these and work through them with the people in front of them. Um, and, and that's um, easily adapted as well, that content. So um, what uh, is included in the print resource uh, is we're going to have a look at some slides in the next um, couple where you can have a snapshot of what's involved. So we have quotes from young people, we've got images and text. Um, the resource is quite meaty, um, so if you get in there and you feel quite overwhelmed to start, my recommendation is to start from the beginning um, and then take your time in reading it. In the lesson plans, they refer back to the different sections of the, the information section of the resource. So you can dip in and out really easily and we refer to those. But we talk about really diverse perspectives um, to help be culturally responsive in this space, to acknowledge that people um, menstruate in different ways. Um, and, and again, not just about the practicalities, but about the, the um, broader picture that we're talking about here. Um, so practical tips and strategies, um, like how to bury your menstrual cup waste, um, uh, very similar to burying other human waste in the outdoors. But again, if we don't know these things, we don't know these things. And then the lesson plans look a little bit like this. This is the overview. And then we've got some awesome uh, resources that sit alongside that. So the lessons are really interactive and fun and engaging. And the lesson plans draw on the video content as well. Cool. So um, you'll be able to get your hands on that tomorrow morning. So um, that'll be really exciting to hear how you find it and how you end up using it. We'd love to hear those stories and your feedback. So the other main part of the resource is the video series. So um, like I said before, there are four videos and they cover the general topics that are talked about in the print resource. Um, so menstruation myths and perceptions, rainbow experiences, the practicalities of managing your period in the outdoors, and then there's a separate video for um, educators and practitioners and how to work with young people around this topic. The videos are going to be translated into five different languages. So again, we want the resource to be accessible to everyone. Um, we don't want language to be a barrier here. Um, and uh, the first video is going to be released tomorrow. You'll get a snippet in the next couple of slides, about three minutes of an eight and a half minute video. Um, and the remaining videos will be released in the weeks following. So um, like I said before, make sure you stay tuned to our Facebook page so that you know when those come out, but they will be weekly. Fabulous. Well, let's have a look at the uh, section or part of video one. I do remember that when I was about 11, 12, there suddenly became this very secret sort of whispering among girls about periods. Psst so-and-so has their period. And it was like, oh my gosh, it was this massive deal. But I didn't know what it meant. We saw the blood in the toilet. Everyone was uh, screaming and yelling and confused about blood in the toilet. It was just like waiting for doomsday. Like this is not supposed to be, which I guess is quite a unique experience maybe to trans uh, and gender diverse people who were assigned female at birth. When I first noticed that my body was showing signs that I was going to get my period, it was like, oh, I'm going to be in the club soon. I remember all the boys were handed out a stick of deodorant and the girls were handed out uh, pads. And sometimes the boys would trade their deodorant sticks to the girls uh, for their pads and would rip the pack open and stick it on our foreheads. Definitely felt a little bit of a shame around it and it didn't really feel like I could tell guys about it. Ikura, Aunt Flo, Shark Week, Period, Code Red. Menstruation has a lot of names, but despite being experienced by millions of people across the world, it's still rarely talked about. Aotearoa New Zealand is famous for its stunning landscapes and outdoor lifestyle. Nature is inherently inclusive, but some of our culture surrounding it is not. False beliefs, negative perceptions, 
and a lack of support and education mean that some people who menstruate don't get to enjoy Papatuanuku and all she has to offer. This series will explore why some people have struggled with their period in the outdoors and provide practical tools on how to change this for the future, bringing mana back to the experience of menstruation. Throughout most of history, the outdoors have primarily been considered the domain of men, prioritizing physical strength, toughness, and dominance over nature. Our colonial history has meant that stories of discovery and adventure have mostly focused on the experiences of white men. So it's not surprising that women, people of color, and those expressing gender or sex variations might struggle to feel accepted in the outdoors. The history of discourses around menstruation always revolve around shame and secrecy in Western contexts, but the positive thing is that we can change stories. Menstrual etiquette is a set of unspoken rules that we learn from other women, from watching other people, from commercials and television, all the ways we should behave when we're menstruating. And they all work together to make sure that no one knows. I do remember that when I was... Awesome. So that's just a little bit of a taster. Um, and again, that's just video one. So each of the different topics uh, will be addressed in the videos. And um, we really, like I said, look forward to hearing how you find them and how you use uh, the videos with your young people. Um, just before I um, finish this, this little segment, um, just a reminder that the resource will go live tomorrow at 9am on our website, which you can see on the slide um, in front of you. And um, a call to action. We are all here. We are all possibly um, able to make change to outdoor culture and practice. And so we really hope that this resource helps you in that process. Have conversations with people. Take your time. Dip in and out of the resource. Um, be courageous. Be a listener. Be a talker. Um, but I really hope that um, this resource supports you in your mahi and moving forward. Um, and we can do this. Thank you, everyone. Arizona, back to you. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That was amazing. And I could see chat coming through just saying the way in which that video has been prepared is truly uh, impactful. And I just want to thank you, Sophie, and the team, to everyone who has played a part in bringing this resource to life. Congratulations. I think you've definitely hit the mark. And it's inspiring to know that this is the type of footage and that our young people will grow up with and hopefully have access to um, if we've done this the right way. So it did make me think of a saying around, blessed are those who plant trees knowing that they may never sit in its shade. And I think that's the bravery uh, that this launch and this resource is showing is we may never understand the true impact of what all of this re research and resource will create for our young people and for many others. But um, blessed are, are those who have put in the work so just thank you so much I've set my calendar while you were chatting I went into my phone and set my calendar I've been told 9 a.m so I'm going to be refreshing uh, the website so I can watch that again and find further resource but I do encourage everyone who's uh, on this hui tonight and who does watch this launch please set your calendars 9 a.m tomorrow tell your friends tell your dog uh, we're going to be logging in and refreshing this website at 9 a.m um, if you don't know where else to access it you can also access it on www.eonz.org.nz so uh, if you didn't get that or if someone else knows that website and wants to put it in the chat please do so that people have access and can save the websites that they want to be following up um, with that in mind we have kind of done what we've came here to do but there is an opportunity to ask more questions and network post um our karakia that we'll be having soon. So I just wanted to thank the team for giving us the opportunity to highlight, promote, demonstrate, and celebrate. We said we were going to do that at the beginning, and we have done exactly that. Um, I came here to learn, and I can promise you I am leaving a better person uh, for being here in this space, and I just want to 
thank everyone for entering into this space with uh, the opportunity with open minds um, and, and the opportunity to go off and be true allies of this resource. Congratulations to the team for all the work that's gone into getting going with the flow live. You did that. We are here. I hope you take a uh, an honorary bow wherever you are in, in your Zoom session tonight. I know that there'll be people cheering for, for all of you from their Zoom sessions too. Um, and for, as I said, for those of you who still have questions for the team or would like the opportunity to network, we welcome you to have a chat with us. Or well, not me, me, because I'm not an expert, but I can have a chat. Um, but for those who aren't able to stay on and uh, can't, it's, that's okay. We'll just send you off properly with a closing karakia to thank this space and to send blessings with this launch. Uh, so, kia i noi tātou. Kwa motu a mātou mahi, mō tēnei wā, manākitia mai mā katoa, o mātou hoa, o mātou whānau, ai o ki te aurangi. Thank you so much, team, for the awesome work, for all the love that has been put into this. I'm feeling the love, and I know that many young people and many um, educators and people who will take this resource to the world will be able to share that love as well. Um, as mentioned, you are more than welcome to stay on and ask questions using the chat. For those who are unable to, that is okay. Enjoy your evening. I'm sending lots of good vibes for the launch tomorrow uh, from Rotorua, and I want to see i'm checking do i check in with these questions on the chat there's some real cool comments coming through thank you so much oh look at this i feel famous for five seconds i'm wondering if there's a q a option uh sophie yes if you can see some questions that people want answered oh awesome i am scrolling through <laughs> the chat to check if you have a question i'm sorry i was chatting uh, earlier if you do have a question please there we go chloe hello would love to know from the panel what good tips and tricks Stephen. okay panel if you'd like to um camera on and that's inclusive of our facilitators um and our people who have presented tonight if you could um put your cameras back on that'd be really cool we'll close off the night together um we would love to know some good tips and tricks about what you've learned from engaging with this resource. So I, I don't want to uh, over assume that there's been every that everyone has engaged with this resource. So maybe Sophie, I know you've been quite close. Uh, Sophie Watson, sorry, I know you've been quite close to this uh, resource. Is there any one in particular that we might want to <laughs> throw this um, throw this past to before I just pick someone? <laughs> um. I reckon we throw it to Sophia. Perfect. Welcome to the floor, Sophia. Kia ora. Apologies. My three-year-olds decided to have a, have a corridor in the background. Um, so what are some good tips and tricks I've learned from engaging with this resource? One tip, tip or trick is about, and I think we've sort of talked about this a, a little bit already, is normalise normalizing this corridor and you know we um have like a you have a debrief or you're starting your um session or your event and just adding it into the sort of the, the health and safety or the um housekeeping of this is what you're doing if you're bleeding or if you've got your ikura and um like what's already been spoken about as well is recognizing your perspective and maybe your bias or your um, experience of this topic as well and just understanding with love for yourself that that's maybe going to affect your interaction with young people when I'm um, talking about this topic like mm. I have Fano that are just like I hate it I don't want to talk about it so that um because that's different for me but that's obviously going to affect conversations that they have with young people around it so it's just yeah in a in a really gentle and caring way to yourself acknowledge that it could be awkward for you but just be awkward together yes um, yeah I don't know I'll, I could go on but <laughs> that, that was one thing is yeah normalizing that corridor of yeah. adding it in yeah normalizing getting awkward I love it um I do want to check uh Oh, Chris, Chris, you're laughing. So I'm going to uh, see if you've got any insight on that question. What are some good tips and tricks that you've learned from engaging with this resource? Uh, I was just going to say, 
um, uh, yeah, they talk about stuff in the outdoors and sometimes you're just scared and you have to do it anyway. So uh, I'd say if you're worried and you're feeling scared, do it anyway. Do it scared. Love it. <laughs> uh, just kind of step out there and and be humble about it and um, step in with both left feet confidently that you're confident that you're going to make some uh, stuff ups and uh, be, be genuine. And I think people are really forgiving. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my, my journey. Yeah. And would you say that, um, would you say that, what would you say was key in helping you become comfortable? Was it those points in particular? Or was there a key moment for you? Oh, I don't think comfortable is the right word. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Become comfortable. Um, uh, what gives me courage is um, just watching the awesome people around me pick up where, like I said, handing over to the experts and just how many people are just there to wrap their support around others when they're needed. And, um, you know, just um, trusting in the, the, the wonderful people and their, their support. Wow, thank you so much, um, Chris. I have another question coming in and I might uh, tap in. Isla, we'll come to you first. Um, what's, what tools or strategies do you find useful to manage your period in the outdoors? Oh my goodness, it's been a lot of trial and error. I will say that. Managing your period when you're doing like a multi-day bike ride or a trip when it's pouring with rain. Um, yeah, that can be super tricky. I totally agree with what was said earlier about like you have different period products for different times. So like um, sometimes I really like using a pad um, when I'm mountain biking just because it it's really easy. But then thinking about like, oh, if I'm going to if I'm going to do a bigger mission, I'm planning for it. Like I'm thinking about what resources do I need to bring with me wow. who can help me in these situations. And um, I find that it's really useful being really open with the other people who I'm going away with. Um, and us all supporting each other in that, because I think that it's really cool to learn from other people around you and they'll have some some great hot tips too. Oh, wonderful, Isla. Um, Sophie Hoskins, you want to add anything to that quarter at all? Kia ora. Um, yeah, I think um, for me, hands down is my, uh, my moon cup. It's just amazing and it works really well for me. And um, been even better since I've had uh, two babies so um yeah I just I'm just so stoked that they're around and um yeah my students actually the other day a couple of girls we were just hanging out getting ready to go um go rafting and they were like miss miss what to what do you use when you've got your period and um yeah talked about the moon cup and had a great discussion about it and um yeah gonna try hook them up with some uh, free ones hopefully so just, that um, is so cool yeah kids are curious and it's, it's nice to be able to, yeah, share, share perspective. Yes. And I, I love that. And we're, we're getting comments. Isn't it great that we live in a world where there are options now? Moon cups and period undies are life changers. And i got to get my hands on some. Um, my mum and I, we've been planning to figure out how to get the best possible product. Um, I do have an, uh, Alex, I'm, I'm metaphorically knocking on your Zoom window right now. I'd love to know, are there any other resources that you find helpful to support discussions about menstruation? got it that's a great question um yeah I think particularly I guess from a, a rainbow perspective um uh, I think I think any resource that um helps I think one of the barriers that people have maybe is um some I think in general some awkwardness and around not knowing how to to talk about um to talk about menstruation and periods um and I think that any resource that would be helpful for just supporting rainbow young people and, and trans young people in particular. Um, Inside Out, we've just released a few resources which are more generally about supporting trans and gender diverse people. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that um, just getting comfortable with the terminology and some of the issues that people might face and how to, to break down some of those other gender related barriers um, could help. So yeah, I, I, I guess I'm promoting Inside Out's resources um, <laughs> just because they're the, the main ones that I know off the top of my head. Perfect. Um, yeah. No, oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Alex. Um, I really appreciate that. And we've had a question come in. Uh, my, I feel like it's quite similar to our 
previous question, um, not so much in question, but just I'm wondering about outdoors and biking and all the things. Uh, so Isla, I'm going to come back to you and then may go back to Sophie Hoskins on this. Any tips for hand hygiene as well as menstrual cup cleaning when in the outdoors while also balancing environmental care code, i.e. Uh, toileting away from waterways? What an amazing question. Oh my goodness. Um, so I feel like we've all gotten pretty good at, at the old hand hygiene um, in this pandemic world, like sanitize all the way. Um, and then in terms of working with a menstrual cup when you're in the outdoors, um, unfortunately, I don't actually have any personal experiences. I'm yet to get on the on the menstrual cup vibes. Yep, I'm sure it'll be it'll be amazing when it happens, but I um, haven't quite gotten there yet. But I do remember that we when we were filming the resource, there was a bit in there. So stay tuned. I'm going to learn just along every, alongside everyone else. Oh, that's all good. I really appreciate that. That was kind of why I prepped. Uh, maybe Sophie might have some additional advice around the use, usage of uh, moon cup. Kia ora. Well, um, yeah, I guess firstly, it's um, moving away from waterways and usually I'm wearing some kind of big tramping boots. So I just uh, kick myself a really nice big hole and um, yeah, bury the waste. And I've got some hand sanitizer. Usually I've got a, a camelback or something. So I kind of can get a bit of water to um, wash my hands and have some sanitizer and just keep it simple. You're in the outdoors. And yeah, I think um, Chris might also have a good perspective from the Leave No Trace um side of things oh there we go chris tapping you in <laughs> Kia ora. yeah um no i just uh to talk about what sophie said like uh you know it's stuff that um you know that top layer of the soil has got heaps of goodies in it they'll break down all sorts of stuff all sorts of human waste so if it's uh biodegradable that's uh dig it in a little hole and um, if it's if it's a, another kind of product it's best to take those out and dispose of them back in town eh <laughs> nice I think there's a yeah there's a very eco-friendly uh, strategy here and I like the emphasis on it um, I think that for now is a lot of the questions that have come immediately from people I want to um, again thank the team both those who have tuned in and our panel, um, those who have been providing the answers and doing the talking, uh, that is a super hard job. So I, I definitely appreciate you for your time this evening. To those who are making the magic happen in the background, you guys are the real MVPs, man. I, I appreciate all of your uh, technical capabilities whilst you've been whispering in my ear and doing all the things. So major love to the team um, who put this together. As mentioned, set your calendars. 9 a.m. tomorrow, it's all go. Uh, the more we can get behind this, the more change we can impact for uh, those who have otherwise not been seen as much as they should have or not have uh, not had the best education outdoors experiences because we weren't able to provide them and now we can and that's the magic um so with that being said i don't really know how the rest of the logging off part happens but i think if you haven't already you are more than welcome to close your close off your evening go back to whoever you are um, around tonight and know that tomorrow it's all go game on uh, you'll catch me refreshing my page at 8.59 in the morning. Um, we're, getting, we're getting some nice messages coming through the chat. Um, panel team, if you want to check out that chat, you, you're getting a lot of love, a lot of thanks. Uh, with that being said, do we finish recording? Does it turn us back into a little green room? Do I need to do a dance and a backflip? I told my mum I'd do a backflip before last failed tonight and it didn't fail, so I don't have to do a backflip, but I could try. Um, poor Marty 